So you're thinking about writing a book. Super duper. Growing up, I was a cute kid. Dare I say, a good looking dude. All kidding aside though, these stunningly good looks didn't help me at all in the classroom. They didn't provide me with that same luck, if you will. And that's especially true when it came to English. All you have to do is simply go ask my second, my third, my fifth, my ninth, my eleventh, and twelfth grade English teachers. Oh yeah, and all the ones in between. But as I got out of my traditional school, I started to become more self-taught. I learned by doing, by owning my own business, by YouTube University. That's probably not a real university. And a bunch of other stuff like interviewing and just observing. It's Education 101, like in the 2020 style. Because of all this, I became an expert in marketing. I became an expert in standing out. So much so that the number one, yes, number one question that I received in the decade of the 2010s was some form of, I want more, more money, more business, a better career, but Zach, I want it quicker and cheaper. How do I do it? And so I wrote a book. Oh yeah, this one. Anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd from yours truly author, Zach Miller. But after I wrote this book, the number one question became different. So for the first eight years of the 2010s, the number one question was what I wrote about here in Anomaly. But now the number one question is, how, Zach Miller, do I write a book? Well, friends, today is your lucky day because I'm going to tell you how to write a book in a handful of days. Maybe it's 30, maybe it's 90. And if you take all of my tips, it'll probably 397,000 days. Well, probably somewhere in between 30 and 397,000. All right, you ready? And look, because I'm not a good writer, I never thought that writing a book was actually something that I could do. I thought that it was something that, because I suck at writing, that it was just a medium that I was never gonna be able to tackle. Sure, I wrote blog posts and eBooks, but not a real book. So I focused on medias and platforms that I could rock and roll with. Also, I can't play guitar, but that was my attempt. Primarily ones where I spoke, just like this. So on stage performances, podcasts, live feeds. I was a TV host of a TV show on ABC and other stuffs. Yes, stuffs, plural. But after I had done all that for a while, I wanted to try something different. Friends, I'm going to show you exactly how even the worst writers in the world can successfully write 54,000 words or so. I mean, if, if I can do it and I suck at writing, then, then you can too. Hey, and, and look, there's actually words in here. Great. To write a book, it all starts with learning your ABCs. And no, that's not a silly acronym. It actually just starts with learning your ABCs. Hit the Sesame Street music. It's time for the Sesame Street alphabet. A is for Abby. B is for Bert. C is for Cookie Monster. D e for dessert. Om nom nom. God, I love that music. Look, as a non-writer, I want to be the first to tell you that writing a book is actually easier than you think. I guess I should also start with, you should have some idea of what you're going to write about. If you don't have that right now, this is not gonna help you. So if you don't know what you wanna write about, this is not gonna help you at all. So figure out what you wanna write about first. Maybe it can be on how to improve Zach Miller's hair because it's a disaster recently. So once you know what topic you wanna write about, here are the 49 things that you need to do to write a book. Oh, it's not 49 things? 
<laughs> you are such a trickster, Zach. <laughs> a kid, a kid, a kid. It's not 49 things. It's okay. It's like, well, just just keep watching. Oh, and if you're going to write a book, I want to know about it. So hit me up at Zach at startwithhatch.com. That's Zach, Z-A-C-K, at startwithhatch.com. Also, if you misspell my name, Z-A-C-H, I have a ghost account, so it would go to me too. But I would know that you misspelled my name. Number one, have a rough synopsis or summary of what the book is. Don't know what to say? Think if someone asked you, hey, Zach Miller, what is your book about? How would you answer that? That's a synopsis. Less than the text of the back of the book, but enough text to get one excited and have an idea of what they're getting into. Numero dos, have a working title. It doesn't have to be the finale, but I found that when you have the title in mind, you can write towards that. I use the word anomaly, that's anomaly, throughout my book because it tied back to the title and helped reinforce and remind the reader or listener what they were getting into and standing out was key. Your title shouldn't likely be 50 words. Try and make it easy for someone to talk about. For example, you could be in a conversation with your friend and you could be asking them, hey, did you read that book? The title is, quote, the title is so long, I can't remember it, but it was a great book and I think you should read it and pick it up, end quote, title of the book. Yeah, exactly, you get my point. Uh, make the title easy. Duh. Number three, the table of contents. Also, do you think I'm starting to sound like Jim Carrey? Because I feel like I kind of am. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Hmm. Shakaka. Shakaka. The table of contents. What is the breakdown of your book? This is the real meat and potatoes of your book. Not only should you have a TOC, which is table of contents, great acronym there, but add some substance to each one. If you cannot add a sentence or two on what this chapter will be about, when you get to actually writing it, you won't have anything to say. My advice, if you cannot come up with small talk, scrap it. Number four, don't force the writing. I think this is where most people think writing is hard. You can get a lot done in 500 to 1,000 word increments. If you write for 50 of the next 60 days, that's two months, for you geniuses out there, and those days average 1,000 words, guess what? You have 50,000 words. Anomaly was like 54,000, I think. The average nonfiction book is 50,000 words. Hello, you're right on average. But do you want to be average? So does size matter? Well, that's a ridiculous statement. I don't know. My guess is that your readers, your listeners, do not want to consume, read, listen to 500,000 words. So make it easy for them to consume. You probably want to write a book, if it's nonfiction, somewhere in between 35 and 60, 65,000 words. I'm not an expert in this, but my guess is that's like a six or seven hour listen and a couple hour read, just like this. It's thick. So does size matter? I think size matters to a certain extent. Debate me. Write when you can. If you're driving, pull out your voice recorder and speak out a chapter. Or if you use Google Docs or some sort of dictator, use that to help. You can get a ton of words out from speaking. If you record your audio, you can use tools to describe it as well. Bonus. I think you should be talking about your book as early as possible. Yes, as a marketing angle, but even more so to get feedback or comfort from your following subscribers, viewers, readers, or whatever you want to call them. I had recorded a webinar in which Anomaly is loosely written off of for several years. I gave this webinar at least once a week for those handful of months and even did onstage performances using a similar talk as well. That way, when I went to write the book, I had a strong understanding of what I needed to get out. It's also something that you just feel very comfortable with. Number seven, if you get stuck, try to go to another chapter. If it doesn't work, don't force it. Just get back to it tomorrow. Number eight, the first draft is done. Once you're done with the first draft, don't touch it for a few weeks. You likely hate it. 
I know I did. I didn't want to write anymore, and I couldn't stare at my screen at all. So I took a few weeks off. I think that's perfectly fine. Number nine, once your vacation is over, give it an edit. You can do this or have someone else try to comprehend what you wrote. Number 10, once you have a basic edit done, let a few people who will provide you solid feedback give it a look. This is not something you should give to your mom who will say you are an amazing writer. You really want feedback here. If what you wrote sucks, you need to know about it. Then take this feedback, analyze it, and tweak it. Number 11, once you have your edits done, you can then give it to your real editor, the person that you hired to actually edit your book or manuscript, which is your book in book language, book jargon. Number 12, wait. And wait. And wait. Waiting for your editor takes forever. Oh yeah. Still waiting. Number 12, I mean number 13. After approximately four years, you will get your manuscript back. Then once you get your first final draft back, you're going to look at it. You're going to accept the changes. You're going to deny the changes. You're going to ask for clarification from the changes. I believe when I got my manuscript back, I had 20,000 edits. Ooh, my English teacher might have been right. Then you cry and you accept it. <laughs> so sad. And then you're going to rinse and repeat 39 more times. Also, don't forget to cry. This is very difficult. And then, after those 39 times, maybe more, maybe less, you're done. You wrote a book. Woo! Drop the balloons! Where are the balloons? Ugh. So that's it. If you want to write a book, those are the 49, well, there's 14 on my list, things that you need to do to write a book. Some of them are easier than others. But look, take a couple of minutes a day and start writing. Physically, write on a computer or voice it out, like on your phone. Hey, this is the chapter where I'm going to talk about this. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's... Look, I'm not trying to say that writing a book is the easiest thing in the world, but it's definitely easier than you think. And now that it's 2020, or if you're listening to this in 2030, like we have a ton of tools that make it super easy. So if you have a topic in mind, I'd love to hear about it. Hit me up in the comments or email me at the email I told you before, Zach or Zach at startwithhatch.com. And I want to know about your book. But if you're going to write a book, you probably need to check out these tips. So rewatch them again, share this video, subscribe. Or if you want to be awesome, send it to me. I'm not going to edit it, but I'll like take a look at it and say, you are amazing. Until next time, I'm Zach Miller. Your book writing friend. Bye-bye.